And we are here, Bridge City Radio on 100.7 FM, KCLA. I am your host, Victor Bustillos. How's it going, South Bay? Welcome back. I'm Frank Contreras. And we are doing a special version of Record Talk tonight. In the studio, we have a huge guest, somebody who's inspired me and many, many others throughout the Man, I want to say throughout the world, to be honest with you, this guy's traveled all over the place from Venezuela, if I'm not mistaken. You are. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been to Venezuela. <laughs> uh, there was a place in, in, in the southern area that he's been in Mexico out there. What was it? It was um, Mexico City, brother. Mexico. <laughs> I'm sure his name has been through uh, it's Venezuela. Either that or Tijuana. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I know it was more exotic than that, yeah. but um, but he's been all over uh, Europe. Uh, he's been right, correct? If I'm uh, not mistaken. Uh, yeah, a couple of places that all yeah. over. I want to okay. be all over, brother. But I've been there, man. I've been there. <laughs> soon, you know, we're soon. gonna let him tell you, bro. Shows how much. See, he's bigger than I. He's bigger than he thinks he is in my head, man. <laughs> but uh, this guy's written uh, two amazing books: uh, Chicano Soul: Recordings and History of an American Culture. He's also wrote the Old Barrio Guide to Lowrider Music from 1950 to 1975 one of the members of the southern soul spinners and a huge inspiration to me the historian ruben molina hey it's good to be back man <laughs> so after mutilating that intro <laughs> ruben well, well, <laughs> I, i'm excited to hear your story bro and i'm grateful that you're here brother you were you were with us not too long ago and you played us some wonderful music as you always do um you know you've been collecting for a long time right. and uh man you you're uh you're big in the soul scene brother most definitely so, thank you thank yeah. you for all your works first of all before we get started and i'm sure you'll get to get to school me on some of the places <laughs> that you've been yeah uh, i know they were a little more exotic than mexico city but <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow man uh what we like to do here is just um we want to get to know ruben molina we want to talk to you and we want to find out some information um you know, from the beginning, bro, right. um, you know, I like to ask all of our guests uh, some key questions, mm. but feel free to run off, man. Okay. Uh, what do you think, Frank? Should we just get right into it? Yeah, most definitely. You mind if I ask him a question yeah, first? Yeah, let's get down, <laughs> Go for man. It, man. Uh, obviously, with uh, this rich uh, history, I see you're more than a collector, but a lover. And uh, we would like to know is where did it all start for Ruben Molina as far as where you grew up and uh, the, the influence of the music in your household and the culture you know i'm i'm kind of fortunate uh in a lot of ways um being born in 1953 man when, <laughs> i mean you know i'm 66 years old All right. so really like being born in 1953 it's like i'm a product of rock and roll yes because 1950 51 52 53 was when rhythm and blues you know uh really blew up and and crossed into uh kind of the mainstream it was it was crossing over right and doo-wop hadn't really come along in a big way yet it was coming so my mom at the time was like 16 years old 17, 17 years old uh so my mom and my dad came from el paso texas oh really and wow. and so you know, you you got to think back, man. I mean, in, in that period, nine, in the 1950s, for a for a girl being pregnant, uh, she already had my my brother was born in 52. And the world is like not like it is today. So right. it's very 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 rigid. Yeah. I mean, your family controls you. Your you know <laughs> your uncles, yeah. your grandfather. You know, her father, her grandfather, her uncles had more say 
over her than she had yes. over right yes. so for her to like want something more mm-hmm. and like to flee like basically to flee el paso man wow. and, and wow. so so my dad came first and he came to la worked the field went up to work the fields up north and back and forth and so they already had my my brother in 53 they came to la lincoln heights and then i was born at the we lived at the broadway hotel and on north broadway oh, wow. and um you know then my mom you know you know decided to build a, a you know family and so with that you know they brought their records man and the wow. records yeah. were like johnny guitar watson Ooh. and and you know uh the medallions and don julian and all this so so this is what they're playing when we're kids uh-huh. right you know they have their little house parties and and, yeah. and they're you know they're doing the, you know playing all this stuff man so unconsciously it's already being uh, woven into my like my dna is like, you know like yeah, yeah. you know how you yeah. see like the uh, marvel when it begins and they're like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 morphine yeah, yeah morphine. they're just you know this stuff's going into my ears and i don't know it i don't know what's going on right but then you know um like nine about 1958 we moved into um a neighborhood where where i was raised and you know at that time 1958 you know like my dad gets busted man he's disappears for about seven years but she's now has four kids and she's got this whole thing by herself and Mm. but you know on saturdays when it's time to clean she's throwing on these 78s man and and, and, you know they're we're dusting and we're all running around the house doing this and that (laughs) and and then she would like polish the floors and so we could run and slide on them and but you know you got this, this music <laughs> going on and then like 1963s you know television you know you get a television yeah. and wow. here comes that like the ed sullivan and ed she would sullivan. say like like she, the one that she would be like really excited was like stevie wonder mm-hmm. the miracles supreme temptation you know the main ones but Later on, like 1966, she would be like, whoa, come and see this. Come and see these kids, you know, and it was the five stair steps. Oh, wow. So, you know, all this is kind of coming at at you, you know. And, and so so it was easy for me, like, to, at 13 years old, to say, oh, mom, you know, let, let's go to the Singer sewing machine shop and buy some 45. Because yeah. records were everywhere, man. Yeah. Woolworths, right. at Sears, everywhere you went, yep. they had a little record section, you know. And, yeah. and then they had these like um, these cards that the latest records that came out, mm. and, you know, from the different radio stations yeah. and stuff. So you'd be like, oh, man, you know. So so I, that's when I started buying records, you know. At 13 years old. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're <laughs> like um, 30 cents each, you know. So yeah. Like I I laugh I laugh because um <laughs> you know we we interview quite a few people on the on Bridge City here yeah. and uh 13 years of age is the key number yeah. with I would say almost 80% of the people that yeah. we've yeah. interviewed a yeah. lot of people when we ask them when did they yeah. start it's usually 13 yeah. um yeah. and that's funny we just had a we just interviewed somebody uh last week who was from El Paso too. And we were talking about that. My, my family's from El Paso. Oh. My, my dad's side is all from El Paso. Uh-huh. Um, and we were talking about how there some good artists that yeah. came out of yeah. mm-hmm. some, some talent was right. in, in El right. Paso, man. Uh, so it's, it's funny how yeah. <laughs> Frank pointed at me when you're talking about clean, uh, you know, playing the 78s yeah. and cleaning. Clean, Cause yeah. that was my story to him when we first, <laughs> yeah. like my mom would always put the music on on Sundays yeah. and I'd wake up to the music and it's like, Lavantate, it's time yeah. to start cleaning here or grab the vacuum or whatever. I'm yeah. over here seven, nine years old. Yeah. The vacuum's taller than me and I'm yeah. trying to do, you yeah. know, yeah. but, but that, that's, it's a, it's a, a trip to hear that 13 is a magic number. Bro. And, and, and you know, the whole thing of like the cleaning or, you know, all these, the, the, the house party, that's, that's how it gets handed down through yeah, generations yeah, and yeah, it just keeps yeah. you know because <clears throat> your parents like then it's from your grandparents to your parents and down yeah. to you and <laughs> down to your kids but yeah so so then like around 66 67 you know like i said like my dad was gone you know i'm my thing was like kind of growing up just 
with the dudes on the corner and yeah. down you know the streets and, you know we had the river man so the river was like our our getaway and stuff but then once i started going to like junior high school i was kind of lost because i had never left the neighborhood you know it was always this area that was like secluded in la mm -hmm. and now we had to walk like three miles to the junior school. high school mm. and you know, it was like it was a, it was it was hard for me mentally just to like, oh man, I gotta step out of this area. But <laughs> once I got there, it's like all oh, these chicks, <laughs> God, <laughs> so many women, right? And so, I mean, not women, like girls, you know, right? So, so, anyways, now you're there and you got all these girls around you. And you're like, man, what do I do? You know, yeah. your dad ain't there to give you like <laughs> the birds and the bees story and all that. Yeah. Kind of, and you don't want to ask your mom, you know, so. But I didn't really like need them because I had like David Ruffin and Smokey Robinson wow. and Frankie yes. Carl and right. they were telling me what to do, man. So I, you know, like, hey, you know, like you get into a fight with your chick, man, you run home, you play the record, ooh, baby, baby. And you're like, okay, this is what I got to say, you know. <laughs> and then, or you want to meet this chick, but you know, she's, she doesn't want to tell you, man, Frankie Carl says, don't be afraid, do as I say, you yeah, know. So, yeah. <laughs> so you're just kind of following these guys that are being your uh yeah like they're all over you man they're like, hey come Mentoring on Ruben, you, you know you. tell Mentoring. her man i wish it would rain you know okay i'll do that you know yeah. so good story so it was just they were they kind of like helped me through that part of my life mm -hmm. that these records did you know and um you know i think that's what made like like soul music special and you know like i said being born in 53 i grew up through with soul music because at the time like see most guys, and i hate to say this because i don't want to sound like hey i'm this dude you know whatever yeah yeah of course but, of course but but being 13 14 15 in 64 65 mm. 66 wow. it's like when all this stuff's coming out yeah. and you just had this soul stations you could just turn the dial man and you got you know uh, kgfj kjlh you know mm -hmm. and, and it's just soul music and it's just like every night, man. Oh, this new from Bretton Wood and this just out from the Vanguard, you know, and, wow. and you're like, whoa, man, you know, it's just it just never ending, you know. And then at the same time, there was uh the oldie but goodie stations was like Wolfman Jack and oh. so that would come on like later, like 11, 12, midnight, you know, you oh Wolfman Jack. <laughs> and and so and he would play like all the doo-wop stuff and all the the 50 stuff mm. that was already in me but he would just like bringing it back like wow. you know i heard that from my mom now i'm hearing it on the radio like if it's yeah current right so so it was just like a beautiful time yes. you know on with the radio you know you're playing with the radio you, you got your records and stuff and it just was was like magical you know mm. to me it was an escape yeah is what it really was an escape was it always soul music up until that point or, or I mean, did you listen to any other genres or was it just strictly soul from birth to 13? And uh, yeah, in a way, in a way, yeah, but in a way, no, because at the same time, you got all this British invasion stuff, like, yeah. but they were R&B. They were considered R&B, the Who, the Animals, yes. the Rolling Stones, you know, Rascals. they were they were doing covers yeah. of soul and R&B songs you know so like like the animals were like my favorite group you know for whatever you know and and you know you don't realize like you know don't let me be misunderstood yes. and, right and all you know these songs that yep. were actually like old blues songs and stuff so yep. so they they had that feel they they had what you wanted what you were getting from soul but it was you know white dudes from england you know right wow. right yeah what was the sense of uh being that you were there at the beginning of this type of music, uh, there was some sort of rebellion, I believe, with people wanting to listen to this music, the younger generation or your generation at the time, opposed to what our what your parents or my grandparents listened to. Uh, you mentioned like the British invasion with the Beatles, yeah. and you mentioned the Animals, the Young Rascals, then obviously all the groups from here with Motown. And um, I, I just sensed that, you know, the same thing with our generation, it was some sort of rebellion with, with the parents looking at, us are you guys as the music that you guys were being playing can you tell us a little bit about that well you know yeah but i think that rebellion came earlier and and i think 
that's what my mom was part of. Mm. Like she wanted to flee Texas because she wanted that freedom and and you yeah. know she wanted us to 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 know music, to know art, to know uh, yeah. these, you know, to be more worldly, right? Yes. You know, she yes. didn't know that what was going to happen, but right. that's what she wanted. And, you know, being only 17, once she got away and then, you know, she opened up the musical doors. Right. So, so really, we didn't have that in, in our house. Like, like people didn't say, oh, you don't listen to that. That's black music. <laughs> I think that came, I think that was more like in, uh, late 50s early 60s when okay. when uh, um you know like huggy boy art lebeau uh, johnny otis were trying to to bring rock and roll into the city of la mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and the city had this ordinance saying hey you can't play rock and roll in the city for kids right like because they didn't want blacks filipinos and white kids together mm. oh, so wow. so what happened is 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 uh all of them took their shows out and uh, our labo went to amani legion stadium and then johnny otis had his shows you know i think like southgate or something like that but they they kind of moved out around the city so that all these kids could could go together wow you know black kids could be with white kids and and filipino kids and you know it just it it you know they basically defied the city wow you know that's interesting but man. yeah there was a lot of that in the 50s 60s and then by the time we're i'm i come up it's that's already gone because you know kj khj was all about the animals and yeah. the krla was you know the same thing you know right. so so by then it was like that part was over at 13 years old um so that was pretty much when you started buying records, you yeah, say, correct? Yeah, yeah. And then at that point, were you just buying records because you loved them? Or did you have an idea that you wanted to um, play records for people like as a radio, <laughs> as a radio yeah. host or no, as a DJ no. of any sort? No, I was just, I just bought them to have them. You know, I just liked, you know. You like the to music? To have them, to play them, you know. And then, <laughs> I mean, of all the records I have right now, I don't have any from that when I bought really? back then because, you know, mm. they just, they got destroyed, man. I mean, yeah. we played the <laughs> hell out of them and stuff. As you, as you progressed in, in life, um, at what age was it where you kind of realized this is something bigger than what it actually is? Like, this is something that I actually want to do where I want to, I want to collect these records and I want to play these records for the people or I want these records to be known, um, to the public because there's so much music that you have that I've heard from you that I still think a lot of people don't know. Mm -hmm. um, was there, was there a, a, a time in your life where you can say, man, at this point is when I realize that this is something that I want to do where I want to play music for people. I want to share this music with people. Uh, no, no, it wasn't until way later. Like what, what happened like uh, in 90, about 96, I was talking to uh, Johnny Otis mm -hmm. and um, we were talking about the music and I, and being at that time, I was more into cars, right? I was still, you know, buying records and stuff like that, but building cars and stuff like that was more my thing. And then, um, and the music that went along with them was really important, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so I was talking to Johnny Otis and I said, man, you know, people don't realize how much um more music is to us as the lowriders than just angel baby you know come on everyone just thinks that that's all we got but yeah look at all these records man i mean look at all this music that's that we listen to and then i said you know somebody should write a book and he and he says you know well why don't you write the book <laughs> and uh wow. it, it took me about a year to like even think okay you know maybe i uh, maybe i will do it you know maybe i will try to do it you know and I started, you know, playing around with it. And then, you know, 98, 99, you know, I finally came out with that. Oh, old radio got to low radio music. But never did I ever think of playing records for the people. For people. Wow. I mean, at, at that time, I would make like cassettes, you know, you know, the whole thing, yeah. making cassettes. Before, I used to make like four track, eight track tapes, wow. and the cassettes. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> for people, you know. And then, and then, uh, um, like 2000, 2006 or seven, Josh is the one that he, he sends me an email. He says, Hey man, would you, would you consider like playing at an art gallery, you know, nice. um, you know, and, and, <clears throat> And we just kind of turned it into like a house party type, you know. So we, we went in there and it took down the lights, put like red light, you yeah. know, like a garage party keg in the corner. Yeah. And we just played these oldies, man. And, you know, people came out and, and, and they dug it, right? So that was the first time, you know, I ever played anything. Mm. And then and then it just, I didn't do nothing. And one day I was in a, um, that's a Sounds of Music in, in uh, East Los Angeles. Okay. Mm. And the phone rang, and they said, hey, why don't you answer the phone? So I, hey, yeah, sounds of music, and it's Arlene. And she's looking for this record, the Midnighters, a, mid, a record by the Midnighters. And and so she says, I'm a collector, you know. And I said, okay, well, I think the record you're looking for doesn't exist on 45. It does exist. I'm a collector. She keeps telling me, I'm a collector. I'm a, you know, I'm a female collector. Like, okay, okay. So anyways, you know we kind of become friends from then and then uh wow that's and then, interesting and then she <laughs> her she she already knew like smiley george mm -hmm. and them you know so so then she says why don't you join us you know with this group the southern solero soleros and then okay so so i gave that a, a try and then boom that's the first and then you know right there is when i felt okay you know, I got all these records, and what good what good are they doing? You know, yeah. if I don't share them with people, you know. And, yeah, uh, so true. So, so that's true. when I just said, you know, although I'm like now I'm saying, man, you know, I I get really worried now, you know, because I don't want to wear them out. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's I'm Frank's, very I'm Frank's very thing, careful yeah. about the weights and the yeah. needles and stuff like that. That's good. Know, just you so know. true. Frank has that same paranoia. Yeah. He's yeah. afraid to play his records but you, but, know, you know they're durable man they're yeah. durable yeah they are yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting because um you had already known um was it was it shuggy otis no johnny otis. johnny otis okay his dad. shuggy's dad so you yeah. had already known johnny otis before you even decided to write the book yeah i mean were there other artists that you were on a personal basis with before you even started writing the book? Because obviously, I mean, you knew so much information in these yeah. books. I mean, I was explaining to you earlier how, you know, when I started learning reggae, there was this thing mm -hmm. called the Rough Guide to Reggae. And yeah. you read it and it kind of breaks down all the artists in a timeline uh, of, you know, starting with Calypso and then going into ska and going into reggae. Mm -hmm. And then um, and it, and your book is it has a similar layout to where you're breaking down these artists mm -hmm. and a small story about them. And then you're going into some of the music that they've yeah. done. And it's kind of, it's kind of like teaching the people, this is some stuff that you can check out, you know? So you knew all this information yeah. uh, in, in yeah. your, in your head, you had yeah. all this information, but you weren't even playing records for the people yet, right. really. When right, you, right. <laughs> and, and you were already hanging out with people like Johnny Otis. It's like, how, who else were you hanging out before this time? Well, I, you know, I wasn't really like hanging out, but we would like, like back in those days, man. I mean, they were pretty accessible um, artists yeah. and, and especially the L.A. artists mm -hmm. because, you know, you could go. Uh, man, they had like the doo-wop society at the time. They had the doo-wop society. They had uh different groups that would sponsor these groups to come in these artists to come in and, and sing and so you can go and sit down and talk with like joe houston big j mcneely uh um what's the name the the, the blue jays you know the sing wow. lovers island uh, you know a lot of the doo-wop artists you know were just tony allen man i mean wow. tony allen was like you know like my buddy you know yeah. and, and you know so so they were always there, you know, and you could just sit and talk to them, and you know, it was it was just like really cool. So, and you know, at the, in, at the same time, I was kind of like that with the blues because I, I really like blues, right? Okay. So I could, you know, sit with John Lee Hooker, wow, and um, Willie Dixon, and these 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 great like blues artists, and you know, they don't even they wouldn't even like 
like put themselves on a pedestal. They were just like, kick back, man. And, you know, just like, hey, man, you want to smoke some reefer, you know? <laughs> you know, and, and, and I, which I wouldn't because, you know, I, man, I don't want to get busted up here, you know, right? You know? <laughs> so, but, but I just enjoyed the conversations with them, you know, and, and so you're, it, that helped me uh, along the way, you know, to, to do that. You're in the military, right, Ruben? Yeah. At yeah. what age did you? I joined when I was 18. At 18, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, and how long were you in the military for? I was in there for uh, two years. For two years. Yeah. I had I signed for three, but then uh, um, I think like maybe two and a half. Um, I went to 72. Okay. And then 74, I got out. Uh, like a, a jeep rolled over me you know oh, wow. fell off we drove off a mountain you know and tumbled down and then landed on top of me so wow. so it just kind of cut my, oh, my time short <laughs> mm, you're lucky to be alive lucky didn't cut yeah, your life yeah, short yeah, man yeah. No, i was lucky but you know i you know yeah. it was just uh, i learned a lot you know just being there and i learned a lot about um people you know they're just Marine Corps, right? Yeah, Marine Corps. Yeah. Were, were you while you were out enlisted? Were you able to purchase records in other places? And I wish, I wish <laughs> I would have. You know, at the, at eighteen, you kind of lose the whole thing, right? Yeah. And yeah. and I was in North Carolina. Mm, yeah. Ooh. Wow. And you know, this is you're talking about seventy two. Wow. What was being recorded out there yeah. at the time, right? Wow. Yep. And and you know, I just no, I was. I was doing my marine stuff and looking for girls and the whole thing, you know, <laughs> that that was my whole focus, man. And so I didn't, it wasn't until I got back and then kind of settled back into, you know, myself that I started buying records again, you know. Growing up in the barrio um, at a young age, would yeah. you say when you enlisted to the Marines that helped, that helped mold you into um, a different person with more of a... You know, it kind of took you from the barrio life. No, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, right. ta it, it taught me skills that helped me, <laughs> that helped me um, you know, take yeah, care of business, man. Wow, <laughs> wow. But you know what? I, I gotta say that you know, I left. I joined the Marines because I was in a lot of trouble, you know. Uh -huh. And when I was in boot camp, like you know, the drill instructors came up and they said, "Listen, man, the law is looking for you out there." We can turn you over to them. They'll take you to court, and then you got you deal with that, or you tell us you want to stay, and we'll take care of it from here. Wow. I said I'm staying, man. I'm I'm not going, you know, nowhere. And really, if 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 I hadn't gotten, um, you know, injured, mm -hmm. uh, I would have just continued because I, I I was like I was I was digging it, man. I mean, it was the war, the Vietnam War was yeah had just come to an end. Wow. Uh, although I learned a lot about people, man, I, it helped me that little period right there. Besides, see, let's see, seventy one, I went to the Chicano moratorium against the Vietnam War. Wow! And but we had no idea what that meant. I don't know what moratorium, man. I was I was uh, seventeen, mm. sixteen, seventeen years old, right, and they were fighting, they were, you know, it was protests against the war and it was huge. And then it just like turned into the East LA riots, you know, they wow. call it the riots, right? Yeah. But uh, um, a year later, boom, I'm in the Marines. And then you're looking at the effects of a war, you know, uh, I'm 18 years old and they dropped me in with a, with a whole bunch of dudes that just got back from Vietnam. And uh, they were all like psyched out, man. Yeah. A lot of heroin addicts. A lot wow. Of, a lot of everybody's drugged out, man. Middle of the night in in barracks, Marine Corps barracks is like just everybody crying, yelling, yeah. you know, just in pain, man, in pain. Wow. And you and you're like a, a kid. You're still basically yeah. a kid, right? And you're yeah. you're in your bunk and you're like, whoa, man, what the hell went wrong here? You know. And, yeah. Wow. And you know, you you look at all these John Wayne movies, and you know all the stuff that made you want to be a Marine, right? And you're yeah. saying, "Man, fuck, there ain't no John Wayne yeah. here," you know. Yeah. And, and it, it 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 was sad, but it, but it made me um, a little bit more political in my view of uh, life. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, when you came out, 
what were, were, I'm sure you had to find a job when you came out. Yeah. Um, what did you get into? What was your field of career? Well, first of all, man, I, you know, like I got out, uh, I got shot and, you know, kind of stopped my life a little bit. And then I had to go get revenge and then I had to go do <laughs> a year in, <laughs> in, in jail. And then, you know, but, but all along I've always been like an artist. Yes. Um, I've always, I've always done like architecture stuff. I mean, I, I knew how to draw. I knew how to draw. I knew how to draw buildings and I knew how to draw things, man. So, so there was a certain time there in my life where my, my brother says, you know what? If we don't do something quick, we're going to end up in bad shape, man, as far as like financially, right? Yeah. So I said, well, look at man, I know how to do this. So. I taught him some drafting skills and we got jobs as draftsmen. And uh, so. You went to school for drafting or? Well, in, in, I went to like a trade school before I was in the Marines, right? Okay. So I knew, I knew how to do drafting, right? Uh -huh. And actually, I almost got a job with Top Shipyards. They oh, came yeah. over, man, and they want, they, we want him. Wow. And I was like, uh, going on 18 right so i was like cool man they're gonna hire me <laughs> so at the same time my probation officer walks in they say he's on probation he's on probation we don't want him mm. you know because it's real like the, the you know the shipbuilding uh -huh. yeah and i have and i had done all these drawings shipbuilding you know these ships and stuff like that you know bulkheads and all that so so anyways that's when i just said i'm gonna join the marines man i'm gonna get out of here so we started drafting, then we got laid off, and then my brother says, well, okay, we got to do something more, man. So, so we made up these, like, fake resumes, man, and, you know, uh, mm. went job hunting, man. So I got this <laughs> job. I went to this, this company, and I'm like, hey, man, I got a degree in engineering. And they were like, okay, man, well, let's see what you got, you know. And, and at, at that time, I had really, like, stopped like this whole gang banging thing. And I kind of put myself into like a seclusion mm -hmm. and I studied and I, and I, I taught myself like trigonometry. I taught wow. myself algebra. I taught myself a lot of things. So when they gave me these tests and boom, bah, I'm amazing. These tests, <laughs> wow. they gave me this job. I become a design engineer and I'm designing machinery and stuff, but I'm sweating it out day in and day out. I'm like, well, I still got a job, man. I still got a job, you know? <laughs> and then, um, you know, six months down the road, hey, well, Ruben, you know, we don't have your degree on file. Uh, do you, when do you think you could bring it in? I said, you know what? We just moved, man. It's in the garage. Let me look for it. And then I just like wouldn't say nothing six yeah. months later. So year, year and a half goes by. And then my boss asked me, for, and, I, and I come up and I tell him, you know what? I don't have a degree. Wow. I understand if you want to fire me. He says, man, we don't want to fire me. And who else can design this stuff, man? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're kicking ass, man. All your wow. machines that are out there, you know, are around the world, basically, wow. yeah, are, 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 are working good and everything. So just keep doing what you're doing. Wow. You know? and, it, and so it, it, that just kind of threw me over the top. And, and, and then they just gave me the title, design engineer, man. Wow. So, Wow, wow. wow. self-taught, <laughs> self-taught design engineer. Yeah, you were, yeah. you, we were talking earlier, and you were telling me how um, mm. you read the encyclopedias. Yeah, that was one of my, you know, 1980, man, seven, like 77, 78, the world was crazy, man. I mean, it was like the PCP world. Yeah. It, you know, mm. everything was crack and all these drugs and stuff. So I was trying to escape all of that stuff and... Like I said, I, I kind of put myself into seclusion, man. Yes. I just locked myself in my house. And one day a guy comes knocking on the door and he's like, hey, I'm selling these encyclopedias, you know, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> yep, I, I'll man. take, the, I'll, I'll order them, I'll take them. And by hand, they drop off, I don't know, there must be like 30 books, you know, big books, man, real thin pages, it, mm -hmm. you know, crazy. <laughs> and I just started reading them. And I went from wow. A through Z, man, and I was just... Uh, you know, amazed, man, with just the world, everything, you know, from yep. science to 
geography, you know, the pyramids and this culture and that culture. Oh man, it's just like <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. a feat, man. I don't think I know anybody <laughs> that can complete that. That's a, that's a, a success in itself. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about the books. You know, I know. I mean, obviously, you had the knowledge from the records themselves, but I'm sure there was a lot of research that you had to do to yeah. complete these. I mean, these are books that you've done a hundred percent through in. Yeah from beginning to end correct from yeah. the artwork to wow. the yeah. wow yeah just if yeah. you can let us know a it little just, bit about you know them, they, yeah it just started with with a lot of reading man i have a, a pretty good library of books um you know on soul music just of all kinds of artists man it's a pretty good library uh so i started with that and then uh magazines you know at the time like discogs had like magazine where they would do articles on people and then um you know, I would call somebody in Chicago and they say, hey, we know this artist. And then, that OK, you know, let introduce you to Gene Chandler. And then he would introduce, you know, you would just like go yeah. down the down the list. Right. And, you know, I'm on the phone doing interviews and and I keep writing and writing. And it's like, whoa, OK, OK. So, you know, kind of. You know, as as I'm coming to an end on the research part, then I'm like, okay, well, you know, let me find a publisher, you know, and then they're like, nah, you ain't gonna do that. Nope, ain't gonna do that. Uh, who would even buy something like that? Okay, all right. So then I thought, okay, well, what if I just do it myself, you know? Mm. And had to, you know, bootleg uh, some software. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know at the end i mean i did all the artwork i did all the inlays i did everything you know wow. and then i just went to a print shop and took them a cd with all and we broke it down um bought the paper bought everything you know and just like i kind of sit there and watch the the printing press pushing the books out and then one day a truck pulls up to my house, man, and they, they unload pallets, man. Wow. And my wife's looking at me like, what the hell are you doing, boy? <laughs> <laughs> the old Barrio Guide to Lowrider Music was the first book you did, yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, when you first did that, how many pressings did you put out? A thousand. A, a thousand? thousand? Yeah. And that was of the first edition? Yeah, yeah. And then you had a second edition, yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, I just, I just, I just would like up, update you know stuff um fix all my mistakes yeah, things man. like that you know so um yeah so every time man i would find something I'm okay the same right you know and and how many did easy. you how many did you press of the second edition bro a, a thousand each time so a thousand i did three each time. i did wow. three, three of them yeah. so how does somebody buy one of these books well they're not <laughs> 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 you gotta have how, how much do the records cost nowadays yeah, <laughs> yeah. no that, that, you know it's kind of ridiculous I, 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 mean, I, I wish i could just like you know print them again and put mm. them out but you know it's 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 a lot of work um i wish it wasn't that expensive with chicano so i was actually i printed 2000 with chicano so and then they sold out and then I was in the process of turning them into PDFs because I was just going to make a website yeah. and put it up there for anyone to to, yeah. to, to print, mm. print it oh, out wow. themselves, okay. right? And then uh, Texas Tech uh, University, they came to me and said, hey, let us be the distributor and and that. And um, so they, they, they took it for now, you know. Wow. And then uh, now um, the Japanese came to me and said, hey, we're going to, um translated into japanese wow so they're doing that now and i'm and i'm gonna go in november mm -hmm. to do like a book signing tour, wow. you know, have you there. been out there before no never no. been there man. only venezuela i always huh? I, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask you how was venezuela but but japan sounded better oh yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah. i mean you've been you've been all over the globe almost i mean you've been to a lot of i've been i've been around but not you know i wish it was all over the globe <laughs> i mean i will go anywhere dude i mean i'm i'm, mm -hmm. I'm working like with somebody right now to try to do a, a soul night in beirut lebanon wow and oh, man. Ho hopefully that that happens you oh, know wow there's a little problem right now with uh <laughs> with the, the shooting situation. back and oh, forth <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but it's okay i mean you know like i said i mean you almost at, at some point 
you just can you just say, hey, listen, I'll, I'll, all I'm doing is kind of like uh, uh, being in, like an ambassador. Yes. Of, uh, yeah. You know, and not necessarily like soul music because it's out there already. Mm-hmm. But I but I like the idea of like our culture, you know, taking right. our culture out there. Because like when I've been to Germany and England and Spain, you know, I take sarapes with me, wow. right? And, and they go, what are these for? And I go, yeah, put them down under the turntables. Yeah. What? You know, but then they'll do it. And then like people will start asking, hey, well, what's with that? And they say, hey, this is a sarapi, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but you know what? And, and if you notice now, I mean, with, with, um, with England, with Germany, you know, um, a lot of these countries that are playing, you know, have soul scenes going, yeah. you know, they'll consider like, slow jams like roll, rollas you uh-huh. know they call them rollas uh-huh. right you know and and or no or slowies you know yeah slowies but, but uh the low rider thing now yeah. is like a big kind of big over there now. <laughs> oh it's the low rider sound but you know what that's cool because that kind of reflects on us mm-hmm. and um that's always the, like my goal you know is it's you know going back to the old body got the low rider music you know it was it was a way to to tell our people our rasa that what you're listening to is black music yeah you know and in a way it's like saying look at we shouldn't really have problems with each other man because yes. we we share each other's cultures so check it out and you know in the beginning people would actually bring the book back to me and say hey i don't i want my money back wow. why, why why do you want your money back because there's nothing but black artists on here. Wow. And I said, what do you think you've been listening to? Yeah. You, like, you, think yeah. Bar- <laughs> you think Barbara Mason and Billy Stewart are Chicanos? Yeah. And, then they, <laughs> and, then, and then they'll like scratch their chin and then they'll yeah. go, you know what? You're right. It's so true. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yep. There, you know, because all the pictures and stuff, right? You know, it's like and a lot of times people just listening to CDs, handed mm. down CDs. They ain't got no pictures. They ain't got, and, and, and you just, you just equate it with the Chicano culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But really it's black culture as well. Or yes. Primarily it's black culture and it's being gifted to us. So we have to um accept it as a gift and 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 treat it that way. I really love that. So so that that was like, you know, the thinking back in ninety eight, you know, and and uh I'm I kind of feel like that's like we are more aware of that now, you know, than than we were back then. Such yeah. a blessing. I mean, that that speaks a lot to me, uh, being a person who's always trying to be loving and 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 uniting. You know, I I don't like the whole idea of color lines yeah. or or discrimination. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think you know we're all beautiful, yeah. a beautiful race. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And we can learn so much from each other. Yeah. Yeah. Can't let a few bad apples spoil that. Um, so the yeah. fact that you said that right now, it makes me look at you in a, in a nice light. You know, mm-hmm. I love that. Um, and it's so true. You know, the, our culture is the low rider culture, you know, we're Chicanos. Yeah. We were raised in neighborhoods that weren't so calm, but so were they, they yeah. were raised in the same neighborhoods yeah. that were, yeah. Yeah. uh, not so fortunate you yeah. know what i mean we yeah. love the nice old lowrider cars you know what i mean yeah. and they've adopted yeah. i believe they've adopted yeah. that from from our yeah. our culture as well yeah. but and it's beautiful we share that we share so much i i absolutely love the lowrider scene you know yeah. i love the I, I used to tell my mom and my dad who were you know old gang bangers you know and i used to say you know what i love the cars i love the clothing i love the women yeah. i love the music I hate the violence, yeah, you yeah. know, and, and there was just so much that I love about it. And it's, just, it's a shame that I can't walk down the street dressed a certain way. Cause I love yeah. the way they dress, you know, and it's a shame that I can't play the music, uh, without getting looks, um, yeah. and, and be associated with like, well, this person's a gang member, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's not necessarily yeah. the truth. And, and really, really, you know, <laughs> yeah. a lot of the, a lot of the violence is just like pride gone awry, man. You know, yeah. it's like, we all have, you know, pride yeah. in, in, in everything, you know, and that's one of the things that, that our culture has is a lot of pride. So yeah. you have a lot of pride in the cars, um, in the way you dress yes. and everything, but you also have like pride in your neighborhood and in your <laughs> yeah. friend and, and in yep. your friendships, yeah. you know, and when something happens, 
boom, you know, if people, get, other people get involved, it just, and then it starts to snowball, you know, and unfortunately, like, you know, you know, the, the gun was introduced into the yeah. whole mix and it just kind of. Mm. You, me. you're, when I look at you, Ruben, I, I, I see you as, um, you know, you're one of the higher ups, you know, you're definitely one of the pioneers. Um, I know there's plenty of them out there that have done it. You've been doing it a long time. You know, from from the beginning when you were collecting up until this point, um, you know, who are some of the people that that you kind of look up to that are doing what you do that you kind of get inspired by? Oh, man. Really? I mean, at my age, bro, I got to <laughs> I got to look at like the younger dudes that are coming up, like, you know, Wes Lawson yes. and, uh, or, you know, Arlene, yes. Josh, because, you know. I have like a certain thing that a certain style that I that I listen to, you know, that kind of came with me, right? Yes. But listening to them playing things, it it opens my ears up and I'm like, whoa, I wanna get that. You know, and so yeah. and and that's the beauty of, of this whole thing is like we're sharing things yeah. with each other, but we're also teaching each other. Right. Yes. And and I always look to these to them, you know, as like they're teaching me as well, you know. And and I I, I kind of like frown when people say, "Oh man, you're you got this, you got everything," because I don't. <laughs> I wish I did, but yeah. then again, I wish I didn't because if I had everything, be then I, I'd be bored, <laughs> man. I'm, what am I gonna do now? Yeah, right. So yeah, it, it's true. always good to listen to to other people, the youngsters, man. They have a different, you know, feel for the music, you know, because. Mm-hmm. It's way new to 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 their ears, right? Yes. You know, like yes. with me, I'm like, I, oh, you know, I heard that back here and back there, but with them, it's like way new. So it's like more they they feel it like more more than yeah you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I know. So we have you know Ruben Molina in the studio tonight, and uh, we're just trying to get a little bit of insight on his life. Uh, he's written Chicano Soul. It's the recordings of. The Recordings and History of an American Culture, and he's also written The Old Barrio Guide to Lowrider Music from 1950 to 1975. Are there any works going on <laughs> right now that we don't know about? You know what? I, it's funny because I, I just keep doing stuff, man, and it's just, you know, like with the documentary, too, with the filming stuff, I went through kind of that. and the, the, Which documentary? The Well, I, I worked on like three. So, Okay. Already, right. <laughs> so the Chicano Rock documentary, and then I did. Um, I worked on uh, Latin Music USA, and another one for I forget the Jimi Hendrix Foundation. Wow. Right? And then Soul of Lincoln Heights, mm-hmm. which was you know more like a story, you know about about you know our culture. You know, yes. it's it's. It's it's about record collecting, but that's also about the culture and 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 the what we were talking about, you know, yeah, like yeah. kind of violence comes knocking at your door, and not you know not everybody's into it, and sometimes things happen. So I have had that, and then um, I just finished uh, editing a film script for um, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. Oh Smith. wow, uh, that's pretty. Uh, cool, that's pretty, pretty big, bro. <laughs> pretty, it's a pretty cool uh, project that they're on, but they just wanted some inside the, the the title of the the, um, the movie is uh cholo oh wow and it's it's, well, it's about, about that, it's yeah. about a, a a black kid raised by a chicano family oh, wow. and he becomes a cholo right oh, you wow. know it's, it's a real it's it's a nice story nice story so i don't know what's going to happen but i did my thing with them and then um i've been writing <laughs> i've been writing something you know for the past year and a half and it's 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 uh, kind of like the story of my, kind of my like of my life for the first uh, twenty eight years. Wow! And it's you know, oh man, just what happens, you know, when um, in the life of Ruben growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> it yeah. sounds like that's gonna be the interesting book to read right there. It, it, you know what? I, I'm <laughs> I'm even like like when you're writing a, a you know a, about something like this, you know, like where you're trying to go back into your life yeah day in i mean you know i and the more like i'll write something 
And then a month later, I'll read it and I'll say, oh, come on, Ruben. Put down the dirty shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then I'll, and then I'll be later. Then I'll go, come on, Ruben. <laughs> you know you did more shit. Than that. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, because you're, you're, you're trying to, to be truthful, right? And, you know, and sometimes the truth isn't always like, uh, the good thing, right? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. like you do you do things, and and it's like, okay, well, here you go, you know. So then, you know, I said I kept writing and writing, and then it just kept growing, and and now, you know, I finished it. Wow. And now I'm like looking at it, like, do I really want to print this? Mm -hmm. You know, you know. So, but it's, it was cool. It it was good for my soul. Yeah. To look back at myself. Yeah. And like that. So. Are these books um, that you currently have out? Are they are they on um, like audio books no, at all? No. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought of doing something like that? No, because it'd be hard. It it would be hard to do in an audio form because of the way the contents. Yeah, a lot of pictures yeah. in there and stuff yeah. too. Well, no, it's just just the way it's not. It's not like a continuous story. It's, not a story, it's like yeah. it broken up. You know, boom, boom, little broken up. Um, yeah, just uh, flipping through there, I've seen a lot of amazing artists, a lot of good um, history in there. Mm -hmm. And me too, I was involved with the early days of Chicano rap. I'm actually, my, the group that I um, was from, Spanish Fly, was actually the founders of Chicano rap in the <laughs> late 80s. So there was a long period of time where I didn't want nothing to do with uh, Chicano culture. I kind of stepped away from all that. But for me at my age now to come back and revisit it, like you yeah. touched on the gang violence of it. Yeah. Because I wanted to avoid all the gang violence. Yeah. I didn't want to be part of, you know, all that yeah. stuff. But now that I'm older, I, I could appreciate even even more than yeah. than before, actually. Yeah, and that and that's the thing, like artistically, you do something, but you don't know that you know, once you put it out there, you don't know what's coming at it. You know, yeah. like who's gonna yeah. follow it and who's yeah. gonna take it on as their mantra, you know, as yeah. their and if you know, if you kind of over i don't know like overstep a, a certain boundary but someone you know like, hey man we like that you know and next mm -hmm. thing you know you're you become the center of whatever's going on out there so yeah that's yeah. true what are what is something you can tell us bro about about yourself that those who know you you know there's a there's a huge following of people who know yeah. you uh across the pond and here in the states um but when we when we think of Ruben Molina, obviously we think of you know a Chicano historian, and we think of the the writer of these two amazing books, and we think of a an amazing record collector. Yeah. But what is something you can tell us that we don't know about you, bro? Uh, a little insight <laughs> to to something there yeah. about Ruben Molina. That it's one don't or two know. things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's asking for two. I just want one. <laughs> but hey, the more the merrier, man. The dark glasses that I wear when I DJ uh -huh. are prescription. <laughs> <laughs> that was, right. that people, was too easy. A dark club, yeah. <laughs> people come up and say, can you actually see yeah, what you're yeah. doing? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I just threw that at man. I, I mean, I mean, man, I'm, 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 I'm pretty open, you know, with myself. I mean, I, I, I kind of evolved in my life and, uh -huh. and I, and I'm like, like I like I was telling you earlier, I'm not religious. I don't really follow any religion. I'm not really a believer in religion, uh -huh. but I'm a be believer in spirituality. Yes, and I believe that uh, we have to like uh, look around us, man, and 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 embrace nature. You know, you know, basically be a tree hugger. You know, yes. and 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 mm -hmm. look at the animals around us and uh, and feel, you know, what they have to give us you know in guidance man because really um each each creature out there has has a message for us you know that's true and, and we just have to like open our ears to to it and and you know listen to to mother nature man. and yes. that that's been like the teaching for generations and generations among mm -hmm. you know um uh um native peoples you know yeah. And, yeah. and we just have to like they had it right 
Yeah. We're, we're the ones that screwed everything up, man. So, yeah, yeah, so if you find a, a spider in your house, do you step on it or do you take them out and let them go outside? You take it out. And go, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Man. That's good. That's good. That's, that's how yeah. we got to be. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I feel bad if I step on a spider. I, I was driving down the street one day and I actually ran over a, a possum on accident and it was messing me up when I got home. I was yeah. like, why did I go that that's way? A life, you know? I, I never yeah. turned down that street. It still bothers me, man. And you know, <laughs> I try to respect all in- insects and animals alike too, man. When, when, uh, um, you know, when we were growing up and we were into the low riders and stuff and, and the neighborhood we lived in was called Frogtown and it was called Frogtown because the river, the, the neighborhood was only three blocks wide. Okay. It was three miles long, but only three blocks wide. So you were always three blocks from the river. Mm. So in like 1964, 65, the, the frogs just in masses would come out of the, the yeah. river. Wow. And they would cover like the neighborhood and yeah. they'd be hopping the streets. So we'd be like cruising, you know, the cars and the mufflers, you know, and, and then all of a sudden burp, the caravan would stop and then, you know, it'd be raining. And then the, the lead car the dudes would get out. Hey, what's up? There's a frog on the floor, man. He got hit by a car and we'd get oh, out man. and move it over to the, move it over to, to the, the to the side, yeah. to the grass. <laughs> get back in our cars and just oh, continue wow. on man yeah. but you know it was like you know that's you know yeah that's yeah. beautiful yeah. Man. i like frogs <laughs> you walk out you'll see a little frog statue out there i got yeah. right there yeah, in my garden <laughs> oh ruben I, it's a blessing bro I, i'm so grateful that you gave us your time man that you came out um i know there's so much about you that we can talk about and and there's so much story in your life you know as as with everyone you know we're all special in our own way and we all contribute to each other or should contribute to each other mm-hmm. um but i want to thank you man yeah. F- for not only just for taking time out to be on the show with us but um as i said and i'm not ashamed i always give people the praise and the worship that they that they deserve you know um original southern soul spinners is when i what opened my eyes uh to the rare soul uh when i started i've, I've always heard these compilations that were out there you know whether it be george miller's or mm-hmm. um or uh last soul last soul, you know all, yeah. the, all those yeah. compilations i i've heard of i never purchased any my my, my primo uh p ortiz um had this ipod with all the mm-hmm. compilations yeah. he used to get it from like g-man i don't know if you remember that but yeah, it was like yeah. and uh and i remember just going to his place and listening to this music and and that's what made me think man i gotta look into this and you guys were the ones i stumbled across um you know all all the music that came out of your guys's camp from all of you guys and i just started i was inspired bro mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. to collect and because I was just raised on the commons. Yeah. You know, I was raised yeah. on the Brentwood, the Barbara Mason, the mm-hmm. uh, Joe Batan was rare to me. Joe Batan was rare. Yeah. Ralphie mm-hmm. Pagan, that's what yeah. I, yeah. that's what I thought was rare, rare. you know? <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, but to find out that there's so much more music out there, it, you know, it's never ending. No, you know? it's and not. I want to thank you for being my inspiration. Um, and I'm sure I'm not the only one out there. I want to thank you for coming onto the show, bro. We we got a couple minutes left. If yeah. there's anything that you want to say or any shout outs you want to give, or if you want to just let the people know where we can, um, you know, where, where we can get in contact with you or or try to find any of your your merchandise. Yeah, you know, I just just going back to the Southern Soul Spinners, man. That that was a it was just a special time, man. It was something that that came. And probably never come again. The way it the way it happened, you know, it just wouldn't come back the way it did, man. It just and it opened up the gates for a lot of people yes. to to be able to um do do the same thing, you know, you know, but it just you know, now it's like and you know, every Friday and Saturday you can go somewhere and listen to yeah to the to the music. Um you know, coming out of people's records and stuff. And it was just like, for us, it was like, whoa, man, can you believe this? You know, and, you know, you could look to one side and it's one neighborhood. You go over here, it's another neighborhood. And and it turns out, you know, that, the, you know, like like in my head and, and the way we would talk about it, I would say, you know, look at, man, we, we got all these people, man. We got to, we, we just have to keep everybody, like, together, peaceful and, 
And we'd look at one neighborhood and we'd say, oh, man, they're here. And then and then <laughs> this other neighbor. But then, you know, as, as time went on, you know, one month to the next, next thing you know, it's like, hey, these guys are chauffeuring in this guy's wedding, you know, from another yeah. neighborhood. And this neighborhood over here is 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 visiting, you know, coming across the hall because, you know, yeah. the big hall, right? So you got... And, you know, so this people from this table are coming and visiting these other people, and yeah. they're like, "Hey, man, what's up, man?" And so, you know, it was just like, "Okay, this is like special," you know. Yes. And, uh, you know, those kind of things. I mean, I think with anything, you know, it's not going to last forever. Yeah. So just just being able to last, I think we 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 did like at least eight years together. Wow. So that was a good run. That was a good run, man. Very special. Uh, it always be special in my heart, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know. Well, thank you, man. <laughs> uh, I Once again, I just got to thank you for being out here, man. <laughs> thank you, you know? brother. Um, you. Real quick, before we close the show out, um, you know, you can find Ruben Molina's books probably secondhand market at this point because there's no copies available on no. Amazon or anything no. like that. And if you, if you do, I'm sure they're up there. But uh, the first book is The Old Barrio Guide to Lowrider Music from 1950 to 1975. And his second book is Chicano Soul recordings and history of an american culture yeah. go ahead and look out for those if you're into oldies if you're into lowrider music if you're into soul music um go ahead and look into those man they're they're definitely a, a great guide to starting and i'm almost guaranteed that if you love it as much as we do you will end up finding yourself in a whole nother area of soul music that's absolutely amazing um ruben thank you again i can't thank you enough bro i know you're a busy man <laughs> but um you have any uh social contacts where we can find you or where people can look you up uh before we let you go on uh facebook just under ruben molina and then on instagram under flaco soul f-l-a-c-o-s-o-u-l all right once again frank you uh, frank you frankie <laughs> yeah. thank you yeah That's man you know, from Venezuela to Frank, you. I want to thank you. I want to. I want to thank Ruben too for uh, the documentation on these books. Thank uh, you, man. Amen. That's super important, man. If anything, man, this is a legacy you left to uh, future generations, man. And um, and our people don't do this enough. So this is a really big, big deal right here. Your books. So people look out for them. They're on eBay. Get them while you can, man. This is documentation of history of the Chicano soul and our and our heritage and our culture. And we right. really really appreciate you doing that man because it means a lot to me being mm -hmm. part of the um history of chicano music right that's right that's right all right well thank you guys for tuning in i hope you enjoyed tonight's show once again this is bridge city radio on 100.7 fm kcla And unlike this book, the Chicano Chicano Soul book, what I did, what I did there.